This is a lesson on building complex data objects in Python. My name is Steve Baskoff. I'm from the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Jean and Alexander Hurd Libraries of Vanderbilt University. If you found this video through some means other than our lesson pages, you should know that this is a part of a series of lessons called CodeGraph. You can find out more about those lessons by going to vanderbilt.lt slash CodeGraph. We're going to begin the lesson with looking at how you can construct a complex object by making a list that contains other lists. As we noted when we talked about lists, a list can actually contain any kind of object and one of those kinds of objects is another list. In this example, we assign three different lists to named variables and then we create a new list that consists of those three named variables. If we do not want to build this list of lists in a stepwise fashion, we can build it in one single step by having open square brackets and then within that, listing each list inside square brackets and then separating those lists by commas. And finally, closing the outer list with a square bracket. This method of representing the list which is how we could write it in Python code, is a little bit abstract. So to think about the structure and what it means, let's look at it diagrammatically. When I first introduced the idea of, of list, I said it was sort of like a place with slots for putting things. So the outer list of three items has three slots, and into each one of those three slots, we placed another list. We can identify those three slots as data zero, data one, data two, if we call the overall structure data. Since each one of the inner lists is itself a list, I can basically expand this diagram by showing each one of the inner lists as its own set of slots into which I can put numbers. So there's a blue set of slots for the first list, a red set of slots for the second list. We can see basically that we have slots inside of slots. If we take these slots and turn them around in the other direction so that the outer list is vertical slots and the inner lists are horizontal slots, we can see that we've actually created a table-like data structure. If we refer to the outer list by their index numbers, those are the first index numbers that we put in square brackets, and that is going to represent the rows in the table. When we want to refer to the lists that are nested inside, that's where the numbers in the second set of square brackets are, and those refer to the columns within the table, starting with zero and going up through three. So we can refer to any particular position in this table by having a set of two index numbers. The first index number refers to the row. The second index number refers to the columns numbering from zero. So what we've done is created a two-dimensional data structure that's similar to two-dimensional data structures in other languages that we might call an array. Let's try creating this array in the ways that I showed in the slides. So here's the example where I've created each of the three lists separately and then joined them together inside an outer list. And if I run this code, I can see here are the three inner lists here, here, and here. And then here's the outer list separated by commas here and here. If I ask the length of the data structure, it will say three because I have three items in the outer list. And I can print one of those individual items. The second one, which is number one, uh, is this one in the middle. And if I ask the length or how many items are, that are in this second item, then the answer that I get is four. If I want to create the list in a single step, I can do it this way and then using the row column sort of notation if i ask what is in the second item which would be this one here or the bottom row and then ask what the zeroth item is in that row 
that should be negative 99 and that is indeed the answer that I get.